Now, is this why we maintain our television houses today? It should be. But we're under a curse. It says, this is the reason why we maintain our what? Schools, you tell me. You can go in our school system from kindergarten all the way and get a PhD in our denomination and yet still not have a class that really makes plain the investigative judgment. This is the purpose of our school system. You think so? This is the objective of our schools today? No. no. It says this is our purpose for our sanitariums. We don't even know what that word is today. <laughs> this is the reason for our health facilities today. To, you, you mean to tell me this is the reason why we should have a lifestyle center, a sanitarium? It's because it is to prepare a people for the investigative judgment, and maybe we might have a steps to Christ somewhere in the room. And we need it. But in somewhere in that program, are we bringing people in contact with the investigative judgment, brother? This says, this is the reason for our hygienic, hygienic restaurants. You mean a man should come into our restaurants and get prepared for the investigative judgment? Yes. This is the reason for the treatment rooms and food factories. Oh, as we study, we're going to find out that there are some food factories that need to be established that haven't been established yet. Let me tell you something. We're going to need food in just a little while. Oh, we're going to see we're headed toward a crisis, brother. Tomorrow, as we study, as we go through, we're going to see that a crisis is developing around us. And unless we are able to grow our own food, we are in trouble. This says, my battery is going, my battery is going down. Is that what's happening? Because uh, you want to take out and have a little plug there. You know, sometimes this is how we are spiritually. Our batteries get, go down. We're not charged. You know what has to happen? Every day we need to get charged with God in prayer. Is that right? Yes. This is what we need to do. It's, it's right there in the middle here. If you can do that for me. Now listen. Now this says. It says, this is our what? What is the purpose? Repeat it with me now. Come on, my class. I see your digestive juices flowing. You're making me happy now. Come on, I see you moving now. Come on. What is the purpose? To prepare people to, to, to stand doing what? Doing the what? Doing what? The investigative what? Judgment. Yes, sister. You get moved. This is good. Yes. She's getting ready now. Come on. Our children should understand this. Our adults should understand this. Our, do you know that during the a cry, the Adventist movement of the 1840s, there were children six and eight that were preaching what we're talking about right now. But how are they going to get ready unless we teach them? And how can parents teach them if parents don't know? We have to go back to these schools. Listen to what it says now. This is our purpose and carrying forward every line of work in the cause. But my brothers and sisters, we've gotten away from this and we've got to get back. We've got to get back to the sanctuary. We've got to get back to these three angels' message. We've got to get back to the pillars of our faith that show us who we are, what we are, and what our objective is in finishing this work. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, there are very little people today talking about this. And there are even fewer that are doing something about it. It's time for us to do something. And the reason why you're here is because before it's over, I'm going to show you that God wants to use you to go back into the places you are, talking to your friends, to your families, to your church members, and it's time as a family to press together, not in condemnation, but in education. It's time to get ready. The Bible says that my people are destroyed for a lack of what? For a lack of knowledge. Until it goes on, we'll move forward. God is going to take the reins into his own hands. Now listen, to I believe, and we're going to study and prove this. Does anybody know what NSL mean? What does NSL mean? Now these, this half is seven and a minutes. I don't know what this half is. <laughs> this is seven and a minutes over here. And we got any seven and a minutes over here? It's all right. Praise God. Now you have a beautiful seven and a minutes over here. Praise God. So, seven and a minutes. What does NSL mean? Come on. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot now. What does it mean? Sunday. Oh, come on. Yes. Yes. The Bible says in Revelation 14, verse 9, that the third angel said with a loud voice. I was in one country, 80% of the country was Roman Catholic. I'm preaching. I asked who the beast was, and people whispered, Nobody, don't whisper. We have.
have to give a loud cry. And if we can't talk to each other about it, how are we going to talk to people out there? How are we going to do it? We have to learn to understand it in here. We have to study it in here. We have to become educated in here. We have to become um, immovable here so that we can go out there without flinching and in love teach the message that is going to prepare a people for the investigative judgment and for the coming of Jesus. What message is that? That's the three angels, the Revelation 14. That first message says, Fear God and give glory for him, to him for the hour of his judgment. judgment. Now, now you sound like seven evidence. Praise God. Now, this says, this is an NSL. This is a Sunday law. COP. What is that? Close of probation. This is the entire world. SC. What's that? Second coming. So this is the second coming of Christ right here. What we're going to study and find out is that God must get a body prepared by the passing of the National Sunday Law. Are you following? Yes, God cannot finish the work unless he prepares the body of believers, the remnant church, for the passing of the Sunday Law. Why? Because when the Sunday Law is passed, what is that body supposed to do when the Sunday Law is passed? They are going to receive the what? The seal over the Sunday Law, the mark of the beast. Those who receive the seal are going to get the what? Latter rain. Those who receive the latter rain are going to give what? Loud cry. What is the loud cry going to say? Tell me one thing it's going to say. It's going to reveal the character of Christ and his righteousness. In the midst of that righteousness, in that context, it's going to call people what? Out of Babylon. Out of the churches and the other sheep that are now this fold. People of God and other churches in the world are going to come into the remnant church. Is that right? They're going to come to the body that's been prepared. But tell me something. If God does not have a body prepared to give the loud cry by the Sunday law, who is going to give the loud cry to the other sheep when the Sunday law is passed? So God has to get a body prepared by the passing of a Sunday law. And I want to tell you that in 2011, I believe that we're just a few short months to a few short years before that Sunday law is passed and the body is not yet prepared. The body is not prepared. Can you imagine? A body is getting ready to be prepared and is missing arms and eyes and a hand, but that body must be thrown into action. Something must be done. A great work in a little time must be accomplished. In fact, look what the prophet says. Let's read this together. Early writings, page 64. It says, time is what? Almost finished. And I promise you, it's almost finished, brother. It says, do you reflect the lovely image of who? The lovely image of who? Jesus. Jesus. As you should. Then I was pointed to the earth and saw that there would have to be a what? Yes. A getting ready. This is the preparing of that body. This is that body being prepared just like it was the first coming of Christ. It must be prepared before the second coming of Christ. They must get ready. Among those who have late embraced the third angel's message, saith the angel, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You will have to die a what? Greater death to the world than you have ever yet died. You know we love the world too much. You know that, don't you? Every one of us love the world too much. Not one of us. We have to die. If you think you died and I think I died, I have not died to the point that I need to die. Someone has said that if a man was that you hated was having a funeral. That, that was, was at a funeral. He was dead in the casket. You hated him when he was alive. And all of a sudden he's having this funeral and they're having the viewing to the body. And as they're having the viewing to the body, you come to that viewing. You say, you know what? I hated him so much, I just want to smack him one more time before I go. Mommy, so you go up to the body. In the open of the casket, you smack him in the face. If that man gets up and smacks you back, pow! <laughs> That man wasn't dead, is that right? <laughs> no, he wasn't dead. And let me tell you something. If you respond to your wife when she says something you don't like in a retaliatory way, you're not dead. If your wife responds to you in a way that is unchristlike, unkind, you're not dead. If you get impatient with your children, you're still alive. If our young people are finding more joy in the world, we're still dead. And this says, we're going to have to die a what? A greater death to the world than you've ever yet died so that Satan and anyone can step on our toes, someone can cut us off, and we don't retaliate. We don't respond because we're dead and our life is head with God in Christ. Now this says, we must die a greater death to the world than you have ever yet died 
I saw that there was what? A what? A great work to do for them and but what? A little time in which to do it. Two things that's going to be the basis of our study for the next few days. Two things. It says, I saw that last sentence tells us what it is. Open book test. What are the two things we're going to study? I saw that there was a great work, great work to do for them. And but a what? Little, little time in which to do it. You and I must understand that completely. What is this great work? The sanctuary will reveal to us what it is. And what is the little time? Last day events will show us what that little time is. We're going to combine them together. And we're going to understand that there is a great work that must be accomplished inside the most holy place before the little time for seven minutes, which is the passing of a national Sunday law. 